In this video, we are going to look at the axis of symmetry of a parabola, as well as revised nature of roots. So, axis of symmetry is a vertical line that passes through the turning point of a parabola. And it has the property that the graph is symmetrical on either side of that axis. So a mirror image. Okay. Now that mirror image also means that if I have if I look at any point on the graph, the distance between that point and the axis of symmetry is the same on the other side of that axis of symmetry. So here, for example, the distance is one, two, three units. That means the other distance on the other side is also three. Now this is a useful property when it comes to plotting graphs. So say I just had the one coordinate, negative 5, 12, and I wanted to plot its symmetrical points. All I needed to work out is if I know the equation of the axis of symmetry. So you might need to find that first. But then I can work out the distance from my coordinate to the axis of symmetry. In this case, it is 4. Then I know that I, if I just extend it another four units, I can find that coordinate. Now, that coordinate has the property that it's on the same horizontal plane, which means it'll have the same y coordinate, which in this case is 12. And from negative 5, I need to add 4 plus 4, which is 8. So from negative 5 plus 8, that takes me to positive 3. So we can use the axis of symmetry to plot symmetrical points. Then there are two ways in which we can find the equation of the axis of symmetry. The first way is to use the formula x equals negative b over 2a. Now remember, because the, equation, the axis of symmetry sorry, is a vertical line, its equation is x equals a number. So this formula here gives us x equals a number okay so if I substitute my a and b from the equation I have negative b which in this case is 2 divided by 2 times a which in this case is 1 so this simplifies to negative 1 so my axis of symmetry is x equals negative 1 the second way in which I can find the equation of the axis of symmetry is to consider the fact that it's the midpoint between my x-intercepts. So if I know the x-intercepts, I just have to find the midpoint to know the equation of the axis of symmetry. So in this case, the midpoint I can find, so midpoint would be a distance divided by 2. Okay. Now all I need to do is add my x-intercepts, which in this case is negative 3 plus 1. Because negative 3 and 1 are my x-intercepts. So if I add those, negative 3 plus 1, that gives me negative 2 over 2, which simplifies to negative 1. So this is found as the midpoint between the x-intercepts. Okay. Looking at nature of roots now, just a quick recap. Um, of understanding nature of roots relative to parabolas, okay? Remember that roots also refers to your x-intercept, okay? So if I look at the first graph on the left, the, this graph has no x-intercepts, okay? Which means it has no roots, okay? Now, this occurs, if you remember nature of roots, we look at, sorry, the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac. So no roots occur where the discriminant is a negative value, so where the discriminant is less than 0. So let's just see, relative to the equation that we have here, where the, what the discriminant is. So the discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac. If I substitute the values, b is negative 6, so that's negative 6, or squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 11. Now, if you work that out, its value is negative 8, which is negative. So, therefore, the discriminant is negative 
and it has no roots or we can also say non-real roots which means they don't exist okay the middle graph has one x-intercept okay now we know that a parabola if we solve it so if I let y equals zero and I solve it a parabola or quadratic equation always has two solutions okay so even though I only have one x-intercept, it's a little bit deceptive because there are actually two roots in there, okay? They just happen to be equal. So in this case, we have two equal roots. This occurs where my discriminant is equal to zero. So let's just have a look at this equation. y equals x squared minus 6x plus 9. So the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac substituting into this b is negative 6 so that's negative 6 or squared minus 4 times a is 1 c is 9 that is 36 minus 36 which is 0 so that means i have two equal roots in the final graph here my graph clearly has two x-intercepts or two roots so here we say we have two unequal roots okay and this occurs where the discriminant is a positive value so let's just calculate the discriminant b squared minus 4ac again b is negative 6 so I square it minus 4 times a is 1 times c which is 5 negative 6 or squared is 36 minus 4 times 5 is 20 so that gives me 16, which is a positive value. So the discriminant is positive and we have two unequal roots.